back to our conversation with Pastor Rob Bryson of the Gathering House here in Spokane. Fascinating, fascinating conversation and stories this morning. It's a God thing, that's for sure. Right, Rob? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and oh. I've tried to ch- close the church three times in my 10 oh, years my. being pastor. Three yeah. times I tried to close the church and shut yeah. it down. And God's saying, no, God we're just not having it. Right. Wow. Well, we love hearing from you, too. And we've had a few people text in this morning. Uh, Ingrid wants to know, where do I get the book? Ingrid, very simple just uh, type in the the title here, Lessons from a Church in Zombie Land. Google it. It's on Amazon. You'll find it. Very easy to find. And um, we invite your questions this morning, 888 Judy is calling in, and she has a question for Pastor Rob. Good morning, Judy. Good morning. Uh, yes, Rob, thank you so much for what you do, and I'm so glad that you were never able to close your church. So. <laughs> Uh, Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I've been praying all morning. I've been reaching out all, to all my um, my praying friends. My son, since um, June, has become quadriplegic, oh. and um, right now he's just going through a very rough time. He's he doesn't know the Lord, and he's very obstinate. And um, he is very suicidal. He's thrown himself out of his chair twice now. He requests his revolver to be given to him. He's he's so lost, and you know, I just we yeah. rally around him. And is he living and, with you? Uh, is he at home with you? Uh, he's at in his home. His okay. fiance uh, is his caregiver. They fight a lot, and. It's uh, it's a tough situation. So, yeah. I I just love him so much, and I just it it's as a mother, my heart is you know just torn, and yeah. I keep asking God for strength and asking Him what I can do, and you know it's it's just pure hell. Yeah, um, what's your son's name? His name is Jesse. Jesse, what's his fiance's name? Morgan. Morgan. Does she know Jesus? No. Okay. Would you allow us to pray for Jesse and Morgan right now? Please do. Okay. Lord God Almighty, King of the universe, Jesus Christ, lover of our souls, you know Morgan and you know Jesse. You know them more intimately than we ever will. And you love them greater than a mother's love. And we're going to pray right now in unison with all the people who are listening, Lord, all of us together with our hearts bound together, knit together with your Holy Spirit, that you would descend into that house, into that home with your mighty angels, and you would touch Jesse's heart, Mm -hmm. and that you would touch Morgan's heart. And for every time, Lord, somewhere in his childhood, somewhere in his teen years, when he heard the gospel, when he heard Bible verses, when he heard the proclamation of your name, we ask you to draw it out in his mind right now. Pull it out of those memories, Lord. Bring it to him. And may the power of your Holy Spirit begin to give him hope in a hopeless situation. And the same for Morgan, Lord. Hope in a hopeless situation. And out there somewhere are people, Lord, who can provide help people who can provide emotional support, people who will come alongside and bring physical support, people with the proper training to know how to help him in his suicidal thoughts as well as in his physical disability. So, Lord, we're going to ask that this week, before it's over, you will connect Morgan and Jesse with those people. Bring them to them, we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I so appreciate it. You bet. It's, uh, such, I don't know, such a hard dark place so i appreciate your prayer very much and uh, i've been going to call the radio station and ask for prayer as it was but thank you i'm i'm so glad that i was able to call when you were there and i thank you very much again for all that you do you bet do you have a good church home where you yes i go to real life here in in post falls and it's wonderful definitely so yeah definitely talk to to those uh, pastors and leaders in the church and say and just explain the situation, and they'll they'll find ways to help you. I have two gentlemen who have gone through similar things, who are very uh, strong Christians. One's an assistant pastor. Uh, both of them had to learn how to walk again. They weren't in wheelchairs, I don't think, but they had to learn how to walk yeah. again. And um, I'm I'm wanting to maybe somehow 
get them to come talk to him, which wouldn't be a problem for them. Yeah. But it, the problem lies in him accepting it, and yeah. because he'll he'll just go ballistic. Yeah. He will just go mm-hmm. ballistic. Well, and I think, I, I think don't I don't. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say I think the fact that they have had to learn to walk again brings them a card. They have a greeting card that the standard Christians can't carry. And let right. them let them explain that to them, and they'll open the doors. And you know, I still believe in a God of miracles too. I believe in a God of resurrection. If God can do resurrection, He can bring healing too. But the healing of the body is no good unless the healing of the soul happens. Absolutely. Okay. I still believe well, that. So. All right, Judy. Thank, thank you. you very much, and blessings to you, uh, Dee. We got to meet Judy recently at the Stealing the Mind conference. So yes, glad yes, you called I in, that. Judy, and glad you would let us know about your prayer request. Mm. We got Rick on the phone now. Good morning, Rick. Yeah, good morning. Got, Hi, Rick. You got a comment for Pastor Rob? I sure do. You know, while you, I remember a lot, quite a while ago, I had an opportunity to share Jesus with a gentleman. He had an awful smell within his in his uh, on his stomach. I told him. I says, I smell something. And he left it up his 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 uh, his shirt, and he had a hole in his stomach. Mm-hmm. And then he mentioned to me, he says, "I'm gonna die." Mm-hmm. And I said, "Oh." And I looked, and there was a big black hole in his stomach. About a, if you put your index finger to your thumb, and I says, "Oh, if you're scared, you're gonna die." I can tell you a place where you could live for the rest of your life for eternity with peace and joy and harmony and he said really and he says i said yes and so he accepted jesus christ Hmm. and right right there on the spot yeah and i never seen a guy so peaceful yeah Hmm. and happy and excited and you know what i heard from i went down to the place after two weeks down the road and Jesus took him home. Yeah. I appreciate that call. We actually, we saw a lot of our friends pass away. I know mm-hmm. the opening story with Red Rob. He, mm-hmm. he would die in an alley oh, in downtown my. Spokane. Yeah. And we'd see a lot of um, the struggle. And then always after it would happen, street guys would come to me and they'd say, Pastor Rob, I don't want to die out here. Mm-hmm. Right. And they would be like, I, well, what's going on? I said, well, I've been running on the streets for 15 years now. And I never thought I'd be here this long. I ran off home, ran away from home when I was a kid, but I never thought I'd still be out here this late. And then they'd get that fear of, I don't want to die out here. Mm-hmm. But they didn't know how to get out of it. Mm-hmm. So, And and so wh- how did you handle that? A lot of it was just conversation. Like yeah. What hopes, what dreams, what aspirations did you have? Mm-hmm. What, what do you think God wanted you to be when he made you? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. When God made you, what, what did he put in your heart? Mm-hmm. And you start going those kind of dialogues about... How do you think you could get there now? And, and Spokane, I wish Spokane knew what Spokane does. Hmm. Spokane is phenomenal. We do a lot of great, there's some great ministries, there's some great help. Um, when uh, Years ago, when I first started, it wasn't quite as good, but like Providence Healthcare, mm-hmm. um, they actually char- got some beds down at House of Charity, the men's shelter, mm-hmm. because people who went in for an operation to get healing and they'd go to, they didn't, they didn't have anywhere to go. You're a homeless person, you're getting an operation. Mm-hmm. Now you're released from the hospital where you go. Right. And they had to like, we can't leave you in these hospital beds. It's costing us thousands of dollars a day to have you occupy a bed, mm-hmm. but there's no place to recoup. Mm-hmm. So they ended up booking some beds down at uh, House of Charity where they'd be like, could we have these beds 24-7 as recuperating places. Mm-hmm. And they did that, and believe it or not, it ended up saving the county thousands hmm. and thousands of dollars. Wow, yeah, right? exactly what was so, needed. And yeah. offering a place to restore and rebuild. Sure, sure. And, you know, as you say, you know, and, and I wholeheartedly agree with you, Spokane really is amazing when you look at the, the ministries that we have that uh, are, are ministering to people who are out there on the streets. you got UGM and, mm-hmm. you know, I mean... Uh, it, uh, it, well, there are just so, so many, you know, I, we're learning uh, more and more. You talked about uh, your work with uh, the Jonah House. The Jonah Project. The Jonah Project, excuse me. Yeah. yeah. And uh, just, just a lot of really incredible ministries here in Spokane who are, you know, meeting those needs on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. So we're thankful for that. Um, we got a text in this morning, Rob, uh, and a gentleman here wanting to know, 
you talked earlier about the community action groups, you know, that, that meet there at oh, the, yeah, yeah. the cafe. Are, are more churches involved now in, yeah, it's in funny. some of those? I mean, when, we, when I first went, there was about 30 people, and we mm -hmm. did a really big one. 70 people would show up. Mm -hmm. And it was held at All Saints uh, Lutheran Church in the uh, Coeur d'Alene Park area in Brown's Edition. Uh, Pastor Alan Aschenbacher, great guy, hosted it, kind of let it happen. Mm -hmm. Um, and then one day when we built the cafe out, I was the presenter for because every every session they have somebody present. What do you do? How do you help? How can you connect? Mm -hmm. And they had me be the presenter. And I said, well, instead of just presenting, why don't we actually do it at the cafe so people can see? Mm -hmm. And so we went up there and did it. Well, that was it. Everybody's like, uh, coffee, TV screen, stage, lighting. Can we move the meetings here? Uh huh. And uh -huh. I'm like, well, yeah, I guess. So we've been doing it ever for it's about a couple of years now. Uh -huh. Every first Thursday of the month okay. at 9 a.m. And it's now about 100 people. It's walls to window, standing room only. Wow. And we've had the mayor present and Ben Stuckert from the city councils presented. And uh, we've had Providence Healthcare and Salvation Army and Union Gospel Mission and Jonah mm -hmm. Project and uh, Angela Slaybaugh, who's doing phenomenal work at Naomi, the mm -hmm. rescue house out in the valley. I mean, it's just everybody who's anybody, Christian and secular, are at that meeting. So did you say the first Thursday of every mm -hmm. month? Every month, month. yeah. So... Okay, in a couple of weeks, and it's yeah. like, okay, yeah. very cool. Now, I'm just kind of curious, too, Rob. Um, I, I love talking about all the various parachurch organizations that we have and what they're doing here in Spokane. But, you know, uh, one thing that I think has been lacking in our community is just a, a unity amongst uh, various denominations. And, yeah, uh, don't get <laughs> you, me started. You know, and, uh, and, and so that, that's, that's kind of been an ongoing, I think, yeah. problem here in Spokane for a lot of years. We're, we're getting way better at it, though. We are. I, when I first when I arrived downtown, you know, 10 years ago, it was different. Uh, when we began working with the other churches downtown, like All Saints Lutheran and, um, you know, John Repsold at Mosaic Church and Chris Merkling over there at Orchard and some others. We would all network together and sort of work and we'd swap food and things and get working on this stuff. Um, but there would always be these churches who came down out of the suburbs, plopped themselves under the freeway and sponsored a meal. You know, just, da -da, we're going to do it. Hey, mm -hmm. we've arrived, right? Mm -hmm. And then we would sit there in our places like, well, you are actually setting up your meal one block away from the Thursday night meal that Gonzaga Campus Kitchen has been doing down here for nine years. Mm. And you're undercutting all their work, all their money, all their stuff, while you're serving a meal at the exact same time. You're going to disappear and not be back. Why didn't you call us first? Mm. Why don't you guys ask us churches who are down here in the trenches? In the, why don't you sure. give us a call and say what's going on? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I kind of know it's because our buildings don't look beautiful. Mm. And we, they, people must think we're stupid. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, look at those ratty old buildings. Those mm -hmm. guys don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And so we would have appreciated, you know, Christian ministries instead of just arriving on the scene. You don't you know how many coats I threw away in my dumpster from the third or fourth coat giveaway every November mm -hmm. that churches yeah. would come down. Oh, we're just going to give coats to the homeless. Great. You're the third giveaway. If you had asked me, I'd have told you they needed boots and reading glasses, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, but mm -hmm. you never call and ask. Mm -hmm. uh, so I always had this frustration with that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's getting better and better. Churches are learning to talk. I had to learn who I will partner with to feed a hungry person is not necessarily who I would partner with to take communion and lead worship. Okay. Yeah, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. And you can only learn these things, mm -hmm. you know, as you go through that, that process of yeah. trial and error. Yeah. trial and error, you know. And it, it was, in the end, when we went to build out the cafe, and there's a whole story of how we had to sell our building and the sale didn't quite happen and blah, blah, blah. But when we built our building, we ran out of money. Mm -hmm. Well, Catholic Charities gave us $50,000 to finish, and the Mormons painted us for free. Oh, my. Wow. Interesting. And neither of them did that because they liked my preaching. Yeah. <laughs> well, we hope to find out if you're... Preaching is likable this coming Sunday. Uh, Pastor Rob Bryson is our Funny. church in action. Excuse me, I'm getting all choked up too. Would you like some a cup of cool water? That Scott and D water bottle? No way. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to give uh, Pastor Rob one of our water bottles here in just a second. Anywho, uh, yes, our church in action is this coming Sunday at the Gathering House, and we'll get some uh, details here in just a moment.